hello everybody it's a pleasure to be sharing the stage with you and uh, a more pleasurable uh, feeling to be chairing an all male panel today so uh, before we delve into the conversation i would request each of you to take a minute introduce yourself and also tell me one aspect of your job that motivates you to uh, go go to your workplace each morning hi this is atul i am the president of acolyte industries uh, basically into fashion footwear one aspect which really motivates me is the opportunity to do transformation in the organization especially with ai ml coming in in such a strong way in the last 3 4 5 years so it's a little overhyped but when you apply those same concepts into business and to take tech and business together i think that's what really is so exciting to me yeah hi this is akash i work with raymond i take care of the property expansion part uh i think the uh, the most exciting part for me is that you have to literally dig a well and take out water every day that's how we do we are property people so we do one property a day so that is pretty exciting we don't have set sops so you have to literally do it every day day in and day out hi uh, good evening my name is manish mehrotra i work with dlf malls um i think we have uh, we have a very exciting job i have a very exciting job uh we get more than we get almost 2 lakh customers every day in our malls and uh, our first consumers are our retail partners so i think every day is a great journey every day is a new learning every day is a new challenge it just keeps us going so it's exciting thank you hi i'm pranjal barua i'm the founder and ceo of renew slip india private limited now you asked me a very pertinent question what keeps me going and what is exciting about my job well i mean let me tell you uh, generally uh, what is our basic needs uh, is roti kapra makan right we at renew sleep add what the fourth angle that is uh, the sleep the need you know but we know that uh, normally we ask a question to you, what time uh, what time do you start your day you know you know uh, what so what time do you start your day is 8:30 8:30 in the morning all right <laughs> perfect that's a, that's a normal answer but we say i start my day at 10:30 or 11 in the evening because that's the time i actually that's the first activity i do is to go to sleep wake up fresh then i start all my activities so you know what i'm saying it's very exciting you make people sleep and then uh, you make make sure that you know they have a wonderful day ahead to do all the activities that all the gentlemen are actually leading them to thank you so okay so mr shrivastava and mr baru i would first uh, request you to lay the tone of this conversation so to say uh, could you take me through the present day contours of the retail industry how has it really panned out in the past few years and is 2024 any different from the past years basically i think from a consumer adaptability perspective the covid has taught us a lot of things both good and bad <clears throat> the people who are resilient enough have been able to adapt to the new changes uh, in terms of the way people perceive uh, uh, retail uh, people want uh, tailor made solutions for themselves uh, gone are the days where uh, retailers were telling what people should eat and what should they wear now the consumer is uh, super knowledgeable he's traveled all the world and he's been through ups and downs in the covid time he wants to uh, live life king size he is not very sure till how many years will he be living so he doesn't want to get imposed on his thoughts on what he should eat where should he go he wants independence and he's also telling people what should he wear what should he eat now the companies are uh, getting more bespoke they're trying to reinvent themselves they're trying to make sure that they are going to the consumer and asking what are you wanting to wear what are you wanting to eat what kind of content do you want to see on ott also or even in the cinemas so <clears throat> from a from a company led to a consumer led the journey has been uh, pivotal in that way uh, this also follows the advent of a lot of d2c brands who are going to the consumer and uh, trying to solve a solution they are also uh, kind of challenging the status quo of a conventional setups like ours where we've been in the business for 90 years 100 years 20 years and they are challenging everybody to change the way we are doing our work i think it is going to be good for the entire ecosystem that way because when you have good competition somebody a set of people who are very agile uh, who are uh, really enthusiastic about offering the right things to people things have to change so they are the torch bearers of the change right now so that is a big shift from covid to now so we spoke uh, customer centricity and personalization is something uh, mr baru and i were discussing backstage yes. so yes. taking cue from your answer mr baru would yes. you like to add to it perfect uh, i would actually agree with uh, what akash has just mentioned absolutely perfect i mean uh, uh, okay uh, earlier we used to talk about uh, customer satisfaction i mean you you have tackled the customer satisfaction you are good today 
I would say that it is the curated customer experience is what we are looking for. I think customer is looking for what you are doing for me, then what uh, you know I want. Uh, you, you need to find a gap and then curate the solution to give it to you. It's solution based uh, uh, business today, I would say. Uh, normally, retailer or a brand would talk about product offerings. This is what I offer. It is, I would say, the change has come now to see that uh, what solution do I find to your problems? You know, it's more about understanding, you know, more and more and then what to offer. Then uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a time of fast fashion in the sense, uh, long, long gone are the days when we say, I have this collection for a year, in fact, six months, or uh, it depends on the product, product, of course. I can understand that category wise, but it is about, it's about, you know, what is required today. I don't need it tomorrow. So it's as fast you change the, 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 your collections is going to be more and more successful. We have a lot of uh, examples like that. I would again uh, go by what Akash has just said, is that uh, it is, uh, it is uh, companies are built now, all due regards to all the huge companies that we have, legacy companies. We have seen in the last couple of years, companies are built and, and made to thousands of crores within a couple of years. There has to be something good going on. This is what exactly we have found out. We have to find out, yeah. If I may just add, I think one thing which has changed over the last, let's say, a decade or so, it's that it's become extremely competitive. So why it has become extremely competitive is because of the opening up of the online channel, discovery of product, availability, designs, and, uh, and availability in the late smallest pin code has become so easy that today, that is what is, I think, creating this entire, uh, should I say, Brownian motion in the retail industry. So, so you know, I too, sometimes I slightly disagree with okay. what was being said here that the consumer has become far more knowledgeable. He's become far more aware, yes, Absolutely. but has he become no knowledgeable? Uh, as a little outsider, I don't think so. I think he just has today far more access to information for example, I want to buy a nightwear. Let's say I want to buy my pajamas. Earlier, pajama is a very normal product, maybe three, four hundred rupees. Normal pajama, five hundred rupees. Earlier, I would probably go to the neighboring shop, which I know stocks one of these kind of uh, things, and I'll go and probably buy. It's not the most important thing for me, right? Cotton hona chahiye, patla, jo bhi hai, comfortable. Today, I'm sure if I go to Amazon or Flipkart, any one of those other plat platform. I'll find at least 20, 30, 40 different designs of pajamas, different price points from 200 rupees, 300 rupees to probably 2000 rupees, all kinds of material. I am now, I am so empowered. You are so I think choice. that's why, so I'm not become knowledgeable. It's just that I've become, I just know too much. I, it's not that I know this pajama is good or bad. I just know that there's so many pajamas available I thought wo white wala, wo check wala hai, yahan to bahut kuch hai. Mein socha tha 500 ka, yahan to 300 ka bhi hai aur 1000 ka bhi hai. Yeah, I, I, fantastic point of view. I mean, uh, uh, you know, it's, 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 the word is spoiled for choice. You know, you know he, earlier as you rightly said, you go to the neighborhood uh, store and then uh, whatever he gives you, he gives you five sets of, you know, you know, pajama, whatever it is, and then you kind of choose one. At best, maybe one more store. <laughs> one At more best. store. That's what. But, but then today you are like you have everything. So that's why I'm saying everybody, all brands, all retailer are offering the product. My meaning was that only. Products are offered, but how differently do you make yourself visible to the consumer is is probably going to make a difference. That's what I was trying to say. So my view is that for independent. Indi my view is that for independent stores, independent chains to really thrive in today's world. A, they have to use and embrace AI in a much bigger way so that they know more about their consumers. And secondly, they have to, they have to adapt to this changing consumer in such a way that they create some plus for him. For example, continuing to the pajama point, I create such strong pull in my pajama through a brand or through something that, you know, you buy, want to buy my pajama. Let's say Raymond Pajama. I don't know. I don't uh, think you sell pajamas, but let's say Raymond Pajama. Would you Raymond guy create now, yar? So, wo mujhe create karna padega. Correct. Thanks. Sure. So, when we talk of the customer being spoiled for choices, they're also 
uh, that's when we also think about personalization and a personalized approach. And we've seen uh, in a lot of surveys that stamp that personalization has reigned supreme in a lot of areas, right? How has your experience been, uh, you know, when you tailor strategies for your consumers? Mr. Mehrutra, I would want to begin with you. Have there been any specific observations, insights that you would want to share with us? Uh, hi, good evening, everyone. So, uh, see, retail is a very age-old business. I think retail started when there was no money and people used to barter products. So one is retail is not a new phenomenon, number one. Secondly, we human beings as consumers of products is again a very ancient phenomenon. We have been consuming products, we have been experimenting products, just that the options and the windows are a little, are quite plenty today. It has also evolved over a period of time with different social needs. Uh, and I'll not go back 40, 50, 60 years, I'll just go back 20 years, 15 years. Uh, what were the social needs which enabled us to consume a product? When as a consumer product, imagine going to a cinema. Going to a cinema 15, 20 years back uh, was about going to a cinema and watching a blockbuster and the pleasure was a popcorn. That it was the cinema, that's it. You used to plan, you used to dress up going to a cinema. Today, you walk into a cinema, you have as much food options as a food court gives. You have a choice of seating, a choice of row, a choice of audio-visual experience. Correct. Right? Correct. It's the same movie and it might not be a blockbuster. But you would spend, still spend. So I think from the content, the whole needle is skewing towards experiences. Correct. So your product is the hero. It will all, see, product will always be the hero. You will always go to watch a movie. You will always go and buy a pajama or a product. That will be the hero. But you also engage in experiences that come along with product. And that's how the retail journeys have evolved. So from the barter to uh, multi-brand stores to high street stores to malls. I mean, the fact that, I mean, I'll talk about malls because we, we operate those malls and we operate with brands, right? It's not that we operate malls. We need brands and consumers to operate. Otherwise, the malls will remain buildings, right? So, what do we do? We, we deliver experiences because the brands are there. You have a Zara, you have a Massimo, you have a Raymond's, you have the, the whole plethora of brands in a mall. People can go and shop. Why would a consumer choose to shop online and offline? And you know, the, so see what happened on, uh, in, in the COVID phenomena. When during COVID time, everyone said, oh, what's going to happen, right? And yes, there was a huge skew on online, those two years, three years. The moment COVID faded away, the, 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 the bounce back on retail, all categories was huge. Because one thing people realized that yes, we can survive sitting at home, not shopping and cooking at home. But we cannot survive for long because we are social people. We want to go out. Our work lives or our lives deal with certain consumptions. And all of us are people who consume different products. Some, some people consume health, food. We are all, some like art, some like books. You want to go out and enjoy, enjoy life there. So I think it's, it's, it's an evolving stage of uh, uh, mankind, if I have to say. So retail is not new. Retail has been there always. It's just the expression keeps changing. So I think that's, that's where it is. Where perfect, is perfect. Uh, Mr. Baru, I think you would want to add to it. Uh, what has your experience been uh, with personalization or a tailored approach uh, when we talk of renew sleep? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, okay. So, uh, uh, coming back to uh, what, uh, how do you do uh, personalization is is important. Uh, what Manish said actually rightly pro rightly highlighted is that uh, things have changed, uh, and it's more about the experience that we talk about rather than the product. Product is there, so we don't talk about a product here. What we do is that, uh, you know. It's like, it's like, what is a gap? You know, suppose uh, you need a product. Okay, suppose from my side, my product, we, we are a sleep solutions offering company. We also get into a curated home fashion, okay? So uh, my whole point is, uh, you spend a lot of, and this is not a category, mine is, mine is not a category, this is not a need base. It's like a more of a, you know, a, like a, like something if you third or fourth need a product, it's not something the basic, okay? How do you just then generate uh, interest into the consu consumer that is important here? Now, we, we approach the consumers from the point of view of their need. They say, okay, for example, a mattress. Now, how do we sell a mattress? There are different options of mattresses across, as you rightly say, online, offline, everywhere. We don't sell a mattress, we don't sell a product. 
we, 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 we ask the consumer, okay, what is that gives you the best sleep? They say, okay, I stayed in so-and-so hotel, I had the best sleep of my life. Or, I, or maybe is a pillow that I use at my home, that only I keep carrying that uh, pillow everywhere. That's an experience we're talking about, right? Okay, then we ask them a few, few questions, very personalized, small, small things. And then we come to a bingo, we come to a solutions. And that's what we give to. This is what we suggest you use. If, and I'm 100% sure you'll like it. Now, this way I've not sold the product. I have ensured that he or she gets the best solution for his sleep. And that can apply for any product. That's what we believe. It's more of curated. The word is curated. The word is, word is uh, talk about their pain points, talk about their needs, they talk about their, uh, what makes them you know, you know, happy at the end of the day. I hope uh, we'll all agree to that. And uh, otherwise, product, if we start selling product, the sale is not what we do. We try and understand you a little more and then try and give you the solution that probably you're looking for. Sure, that's understood. our approach. Understood. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Srivastava, my next question is for you. So uh, while we understand that competition and demand and the overall economy, they immensely influence how a retail strategy is devised, so to say. Uh, I want you to explain to us what really goes in the mind of a retailer when he's actually sitting on the table and devising a retail strategy. I think the heart of any strategy has to be the end consumer. <clears throat> so you know, in our case, the people who consume the product, the apparel, would have to be at the center of all the decisions that we take. The other thing would be uh, whatever decision we take, uh, <clears throat> although uh, the fact remains that the consumer would be at the forefront of it, it has to be sustainable. We do not want to take shortcuts right now, which would be giving you results for half a year. We are building companies for years. So two things, one, uh, the consumer at the forefront and sustainability of whatever we take and the longevity of whatever decisions we take. So these can't be tactical for sure. Now, <clears throat> with the advent of technology, uh, and we keep talking about technology, I think more than we should, but the fact remains that they are actually at the backbone of everything that we do. And uh, COVID taught us that if you really do not have technology, you, you are bound to fail. And if you do not adapt, so if you're not agile, <clears throat> the core behind any strategy has to be, you know, while you have to uh, carve everything in stone, you still have to be very agile in, in, in terms of changing if the things do not fall your way. So you can't be really rigid with what you do. So flexibility in the current times are very, very important. You start a product, it, it doesn't show you uh, the right results. Uh, do not fall in the ego of running it for three, four years, right? Uh, understand where the problem is, rectify. If you think it can't be rectified, change it. So uh, adaptability would be the key. And uh, hear your consumer. You know, you have to keep going back to him in terms of whatever you are selling, be it experiences or be it personalization of any service. Like we run a brand called uh, Raymond Made to Measure. So we do custom tailoring in a factory. So you get a factory fitting shirt, tailor made to your body type. So that is nothing but an experience, right? We heard the consumer, he said, I want the finishing not of the tailor babu, but I want a ready-made car finishing in my body type. So we offered a marriage of both. And that's not even bespoke tailoring. It's very different. So we heard the consumer and we, we got him back with this. So collaboration as we all understand, uh we live in the age of collaboration, let's just say that. Uh, Mr. Mehrutra and Mr. Uh, Jain, I would want you to explain to us how has collaboration really matured over the years? What have your observations been, uh, your inputs? So I know that you work with Landmark and Pantaloon, so you've, you've got the history of uh, history with retail brands. So how would you want to put it, up, put it across? See, uh, it, see, first of all, it's important to understand how do you define collaboration? Uh, as brands, as organizations, uh, we don't transact. Uh, brands and organizations are personalities. You know, when we, when we meet people, we meet a personality. You know, someone who looks like that, someone has a certain habit, someone has a way of talking, someone has a way of dressing. You know, just like human beings, I think brands have a personality. And I think we connect to the personality. Uh, so fundamentally speaking. Now let's see how it really happens. When you go to a brand, you see, uh, you, you see brands today talking about sustainability. You see brands offering collections. You see brands running promotions. You see brands associating with celebrities or brand ambassadors. You see brands taking up social causes. And when I say brands, I'm, I would say any retail, any brand, retail, FMCG, malls, any brand is a brand, mm -hmm. right? People want to, to see, people want to see brands who stand for a purpose beyond the product, 
right? It's important. So I'll give you an example. When people, and I'll take the mall's example. When people walk into a mall, they see something and they believe in certain things. There are certain things they don't see, but they believe. So that's the trust factor. For example, I don't know how many people would know that the irrigation water in the mall is recycled water. Right? It's a huge USP. When international brands come to us, they want to see our commitment towards safety, environment, and society. They do not choose DLF malls only because of beautiful architecture or footfall. Mm. Now that's the personality that we represent. Yes, we, we do offer safe, nice, great experiences for retailers to have their stores and consumers to come and shop. But we also, also give an environment we also, we are also a brand that has a commitment towards certain social causes. Now these are not seen, these are unseen factors. But it, it adds to my personality. It's like saying that, you know, people who read are more intelligent. Now no one sees that. But intelligence comes in the way you express yourself to the outside world. The reason of that intelligence is, I'm a great reader. So there is a, there is a personality that you express and there is something that goes behind that personality so I think brands today crea are created like that. So I'm sorry, I've just... So collaboration is not just about a topical co collaboration or a transactional collaboration. That, oh, let's come together, uh, let's do create a promo, let's do an event. Let's not, it's not like t tying up with a celebrity. I think collaboration is a much larger word today. Consumers want to look at the collaboration. Yes, you have to express yourself saying, what are you collaborating, where are you advertising, are you on Instagram? These are all expressions. I think collaboration is a lot deeper today. And today's younger consumer wants people, and I think, I think, I think the online business, and I totally agree with you, awareness has gone to another level. Yeah. And it's great to see today's youth, India's a growing economy, and it's great to see today's youth wanting to see brands who stand for a purpose. And I think that's the two power of internet and the power of online. They want to explore brands online, come and shop offline. So that's, I think the biggest, expression of collaboration today is online and offline exist, coexist and they'll continue to coexist. It is beyond, it is, it's totally against the belief that some people had that online, pata nahi kya hoga. nothing like that, it's, it's, it's coexistence. If I will just add to what Manish said just now, on the same uh, point which he mentioned about recycled water being used in DLF malls, which actually helps one of part of his ecosystem, which is the the retail brand owners to actually come and prefer their set of offering. My, I'm just taking that logic to a little next stage of extension, which is my other ecosystem partners are consumers and other customers who come into the mall. Can I, and maybe, maybe DLF already does this, I'm not aware, can I look at community participation into recycling water? So I'm just extending that in terms of collaboration. So the thought which is already mentioned here, can I, maybe it's done, can that be done? To, to me, so much is being said, I think Anurag said in the morning that there is, there is lot of things about what, how that product is made. Is it green? Is it sustainable? If we can involve the communities, if we can involve the ecosystem or retail, which is the communities around you, into some very causes which are either becoming important or which are becoming dearer and dearer to the, to the whole planet, that is something we should look at. There are traditional collaboration theories which are there, which are not new. I don't want to delve on them. For example, supplier collaborations, category management collaborations uh, with your key suppliers. Those are, I think, done with and dusted and I think we all know about it. But what I would definitely like to see more of and which I think is beginning to happen is these strategic collaborations which, which go with the changing times, which is what the consumers are today asking for, and retailers are going towards in that direction. Sure. Uh, so Akash and Pranjal, uh, I would want you to uh, help us understand that what are some of the retail strategies that have typically worked well for the business? Uh, any strategy, use case examples, that you would want to quote, just say, company ki growth badi ho, and you would encourage them in the future as well. <coughs> So I think from a marketing standpoint, one important thing would be to uh, realize who your consumer is and then uh, get to the right social media platforms. 
like in our case, we've been able to attract a certain kind of audience like at Raymond. Uh, now we are trying to become even more relevant for people who have traditionally not been our consumers, like the youth. You know, somebody who got into his first job, uh, he would have known about Raymond, but he probably shopping with us, you know, the jury out. So we are trying to uh, be relevant to them by being on uh, Instagram and uh, YouTube and and couple of other other social media platforms. So on from a marketing standpoint, we are also pivoting around uh, you know knowing our consumer and getting to attract them where they are going and visiting. <clears throat> the other could be what would a consumer be asking for in a in a conventional brand like ours. So I think he's looking at a better size. So uh, we have a 38 and a 40 shirt. So he's looking at a 39, the slim fit that we traditionally may not, you know, a lot of companies do not have. We are also looking at uh, body types which are more for the coming time. So we are trying to innovate there. In terms of what Manish also mentioned, the sustainability part. So we have our fabric which are derived from sustainable sources. So we see a lot of people going towards it. We also, we kind of do not advertise, but then the initiatives that we have taken for sustainability are kind of... Uh, you know, giving us an edge over few of the conventional brands because people want to associate with brands who are giving it back to the society. Uh, so that comes under the product. In terms of the strategy, <coughs> the other larger point would be why don't you open more doors for people to, you know, experience your brand. So uh, be part of the malls with DLF, uh, go to the high streets, go to tourism and religious places where consumption is happening right now. So our only thing is that we identify where people are moving and uh, basically all the brands that we have, we have seven brands right now under our, our uh, umbrella and offer uh, custom varieties to people in those markets. Like for example, if you are in Ayodhya, uh, how about a very good ethnic store because people would be coming with certain religious beliefs. <coughs> they would really want to dress up into uh, uh, something which is like a traditional wear and then go to a temple. Uh, when we open a store in Udaipur, you know, people want to dress up with a lot of colors, right? Rajasthan has been about it. So why not get a store which is very vibrant and which the consumer can have immediately? So we are trying to be closer to where our consumer is. So three, four strategies that have really worked in our favor are these only. Sure. Great. Uh, yeah. Good highlight. I mean, like, uh, in fact, thanks to both of you about collaborations. I had a point to make to that as well, and probably I can come Please to it and not take much time. Uh, you know, he is Manish is sitting here, probably one of the best person can come come to a solution. If I can suggest to you, of course, I'm sure you've done this. Okay, suppose uh, we are talking about retailer. You, you have uh, probably uh, at any given point of time 100, 150 uh, tenants uh, or other, uh, maybe more than that. Yeah, okay. So, so for example, not everybody is big or small. I mean, they can or cannot afford everything. But yesterday there was a session on AI. Uh, and the same, I was uh, fortunate to attend and I had a few discussions with Anurag as well. Now, one thing that we were discussing in, in, at the back room was that how can AI evolve, uh, you know, like, you know, you know work with uh, somebody like a mall operator like you. For example, what we're discussing is that, uh, okay, in your mall, for example, we have, a, we have a one hall or something like that where this is an AI-enabled uh, a showroom, you know what I'm, I mean? And it's not uh, only for me or uh, Raymond or Renew or somebody else, it's for everybody. I'm sure you're thinking towards that, I'm 100% sure about it. So what happens is that this is where the collaboration come in. Now a consumer comes for an experience, this could be a, a, a drawing point for him as well, comes and okay, he stands there and then it's just he or she gets the product in front of uh, her or him. Uh, through AI, and then goes to the store and buy. You know what I'm trying to do. So it could be an experience center, something like that. I was just, when you were talking, I was just, it, was, it was in my mind. Uh, I don't know, I mean, what oh, you sure. do. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll take it beyond. Sure. You are absolutely right. Correct. So see, one That's is process, technology, yeah. uh, the way you look at technology. So there are two things. One is experiences, the other is technology, right? Uh, when you talk of technology, technology, the, the fundamental of introducing any technology to the mall is, it is not to disrupt consumer experience, it is to facilitate consumer's journey when a consumer walks into the mall. A consumer spends anything between three to four hours in a mall. So that's an average time, okay? You watch a movie, it goes up by an hour, average time goes up by an hour, hour and a half, otherwise anything between two and a half or to four hours is the broad time. Uh, the journey starts from when you enter the parking and when you exit the mall. Okay, entry, exit, all inclusive, that's the time. Now, at every step, there is a technology that can facilitate a consumer. Now, let me give a very small example. Uh, we enroll a consumer on loyalty because we want to reward a consumer. Yes, great. Consumer will appreciate it. Uh, you want the consumer 
uh, uh, you want a loyalty app on your phone where the consumer can go through the whole mall, navigate, great, adds on to the consumer. But you, then you start asking too many questions to the consumer, yes, sir. it's disruptive. Yeah. So see, use of technology is like a phone. A phone comes with 250 apps. You, you don't use more than 20. See, the real thing is that, con that, that the, the environment is filled with options. You have to be non-intrusive and add to the experience. That's number one. Number two, when it comes to overall experiences, and AI is one of them. I agree with what you're saying. It's exciting because consumers do expect. See, when consumers walk into malls, what do they expect? We trade. They come, they park, they shop, they eat, they watch movie and go. It's very transactional. Consumers today, and thanks to the evolving nation that we are, uh, are, 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 are uh, the population in terms of our, our, uh, the economy is growing. Uh, I think consumptions are going up. Uh, I think it's a great journey for, for, for the country. People love to experiment new things, mm. right? You walk into a coffee shop, you have 20 to choose from. You walk into a chai shop, you have 15, 20 to choose from. You walk into a food shop, you, you walk into a burger shop, you have 20 burgers to choose from. So people like experimenting, experiencing. Now, when our product is the mall, we don't sell a product per se to the consumer. How do we do it? We create events which is beyond transactions. Mm. Okay? Uh, loyalty, yes, but I think before loyalty comes with experiences. You, you, you give experiences, you hold events, you hold musical nights. What are those things? Malls are social spaces, they're not trading spaces. The point that I'm trying to make is the malls are social spaces. People want to come, enjoy, have a good time. And not just shop. Shopping is a very, it's important. We earn money out of it. So for us, it's very important that people come and shop. But they are social spaces. Uh, on the similar connected point um, on AI that you used, you know, I just have a very simple uh, belief in this. We are business people, marketing business, whatever you want to call us. We are not tech people. Mm. As such. Tech people will do their work. Business has to see how tech can be used to enhance business. What is the goal of business, end of the day? To increase your revenues, to increase your EBITDA margins and to increase your profits. End of the day, that is the goal. You know, organizations I've seen, and I've worked in multiple organizations, I've seen that they really struggle with putting the right data, giving the right information to their internal employees in the, at, the, at the right time, in the right format, which will help them to take business decisions in a better way. There is so much of data available in structured and unstructured form in corporates and in large companies and even mid-sized companies and data which is not available in many companies, but which is there, that uh, if it can be organized in such a way which helps you to take decisions, that is where I think AI, ML can today come in and help us. You know, what is, uh, what is really happening with ChatGPT? What is ChatGPT doing? ChatGPT has got the entire internet available to it to come up with bespoke solutions to you. You ask something, it will come up with the information which is available and gives you an answer or gives you a solution to it. Can organizations, retail, non-retail, can they make their own chat GPT within their own, own environment? Can they make a chat GPT which is restrictive within the four, within the, which is firewalled from the organization? You know, you can ask me, why should that be done? Why, there is already a chat GPT, why can't you just take solutions from chat GPT? But chat GPT will not know from this particular store, this particular design, what was the sale which happened in the last festive season. What was the size which sold, which does not sell. It, it will not have that kind of information available. Secondly, chat GPT, which is an open LLM, which is large language model kind of a format, Chat GPT will also be very, will also have security risk. You will not like to give your data out in the open for them to work on Chat GPT. Chat GPT also, we all know, also kind of bit of bit hallucination also happens. Why does it happen? Because they very confidently tell you things which may or may not be <laughs> correct. Because they, their data points are what are there in the internet. They are not verified data points. Whereas when an organization gives a data point within its four walls, they are all verified data points or almost verified data points, so you will get an accurate inference coming out. So I'm saying AI should be used by organizations, 
in simple terms to create their own chat GPTs. So that I as an employee, I'm given my tools, I'm given some KPIs, I can just go in and get the answers which I need, data-based answers which will help me further the business. I'm sitting in front of a customer in retail point and if through visual mechanisms, AI can tell me that this customer came to my shop four months back, picked up this shirt which was blue in color, 40 in size, as a retail salesperson, that's very good data for me. That helps me to, at that moment, probably help and increase the business for the organization. Can that be done? I think it can be done. Is it being done? Probably in some organizations. I don't know if it is being done in large number of organizations. If I am somebody who is going in a B2B scenario to talk to some customer, back-end customer, and do some, uh, some negotiations with him or do some business reviews with him, if I can get some KPIs right there, the three or four key important things, how much stock he has, what has his, uh, his growth been, what has his degrowth been, and available to me through my internal AI systems, well, that's a big an answer to correct. So I think business and technology has to marry together to become whatever we call as AI ML, to become AI ML, which really enables you to grow the businesses. Thanks. I think you had some very pertinent, yes, uh, additions to this conversation. Uh, Atulji, I would also want to ask you, how do you see the future of reco retail ecosystem when we talk about, when we say that it is going to be an AI, ML driven, uh, you know, uh, ecosystem basically. How is AI, ML going to drive the overall uh, strokes of the reta retail ecosystem in the coming few years? See, as, as I said, let's divorce technology with business. Okay. The tech will be done by the tech guys, they're, they're all over the world, including India. Uh, and they will keep developing newer and newer ways of enhancing the ability of tech. So I'm just divorcing that. I'm saying here I'm a business leader. I need to get information, and I think to my earlier point which I just said, I need to get information which is relevant to me and accurate, which helps me make the right business decisions. Yeah. So I think AI will be used for transforming the businesses, retail businesses, non-retail businesses. In They actually started in a very big win the last couple of years already, in the next few years, where data which is accurate will be available in the right format uh, uh, at the right time to the people working in the organizations so that they can use it to enhance the revenue for the organization, enhance profitable revenue for the organization. So, so use cases of AI, utilization of AI within organizations will increase tremendously. How will it increase and what does it mean for all of us? Means we have to be completely open. The top leadership of organizations has to be very, very uh, uh, aware of this and accepting of this and also sponsoring of this for it to be implemented across the organizations because any AI implementation requires a lot of pain. It is, requires a lot of change in the way you think and the way you work. And the top leadership has to, has to actually push it down to the, to, the, to the hundreds of people who actually make an organization run and become profitable. So a lot of work will need to be done in executing that AI-led innovation, whatever you have thought of for your organization. That's my day. Sure. Uh, so in the interest of time, I will ask my last question to the all of you. Uh, there have been occasions when we've seen that collaboration has not been able to tap, you know, its full potential. And there have been occasions when we've seen that retailers and suppliers have kept each other at an arm's distance. Uh, this is just one of the examples between the retailers and the suppliers, but how can a greater synergies be created between all the stakeholders in this uh, strategy process or a collaboration process? I am not sure if that exists today. Okay. I think uh, everyone who is a part of a business, uh, be it retail or be it FMCG or anything, I think the whole ecosystem works very well today. Uh, I think the production guys know that there is a market the the vendor knows there's a the, there is a supplier uh, a buyer 
coexistence, as we say. Uh, at times, business priorities differ and they'll always continue to differ. My priority might not be someone else's priority and I think that will always happen. That happens in our personal lives also, right? So this is still business. Uh, I think people today em understand, accept and acknowledge the fact that we have to coexist. There is a lot of humility. Uh, there is always, uh, I think today there is a lot more transparency when uh, I've been part of brands earlier before DLF and uh, and I've seen the transition happening when the when our manufacturer years back my was not comfortable sharing the cost transitioning to the buyer and the manufacturing sitting together and building a cost of a garment okay so in the age-old world says my business I couldn't I don't want to share too much this is a garment 100 pieces you'll get at this price 200 pieces you'll get at this price and that was it that shifted to over the years let us sit together and see how can we create this at a lesser cost lesser cost you earn your margin I earn my margin and we give it to a better price to a consumer sure. uh, by saying okay this design detail can be altered this button can be modified uh, this fabric composition can be changed the price can still remain 500 all of us earn our margins consumer gets it at the right price but we create a lot more synergy in terms of the product cost uh, I think the thought of sustainability and coexistence is there today somewhere less somewhere more but I think there is a lot of progression happening there uh, I think and and please understand organizations Traders, they understand, they're very mature people. That's why they run their businesses. Mm -hmm. And the size doesn't matter. A, a, a shopkeeper is a shopkeeper. He's a trader. He runs his business. He's the malik of his business. Right? He employs, even if he employs five people, he's doing a great job by employing five people. He's a business owner. Absolutely. As respectful as a, a big, big, uh, big organization. So there is no difference. Stature doesn't define uh, all this. Station is just a PNL matter. So I think that coexisting happens today. People are transparent. A little less, a little more, but then that's always going to be. Sure, Mr. Barua. I, I think I agree. Uh, we are in a business, uh, you know, like which actually reflecting what you are saying. Uh, we are a capex-less, uh, you know, business where uh, we work with the uh, principle of uh, lowest MOQ and the minimum inventory across the value chain. So we understand what you are saying, and then exactly, I think today we, when we are working, we are working with artisans. We are, we are working with smaller manufacturers, and uh, they are absolutely open today. And he's rightly said that they are open. They open the books and factories to us at any given point of time. And we actually work. This is where collaboration comes. <coughs> Do we have two minutes time? No, okay, more. perfect. Thank you. So, uh, <clears throat> so uh, I think we sit across the table. We understand each other's point. There, we talk about the credit. Uh, you know, to talk about the how much uh, uh, you know upfront that we need to give and what is the kind of support you're looking for. It's not always money. It's more about probably running his factory. We take the onus of running his factory. He takes the onus of making sure that I get what I'm, as a brand I'm looking sure. for. It's, it's, I completely agree with what, what Manish is saying. Things have changed over the years. Uh, we worked, I worked in a, with my uh, you know, co-founder, we worked for close to about three, three decades in a big organization. I will not name it in a public forum, of course. We have, we have seen how things have changed from a you know, from collaboration point of view. People are actually very open now and uh, things have changed completely. They are open to each other's uh, pain points and I think we are trying to solve. I think that's where I think positive, it's very positive from India's point of view and we are seeing the change. That's why we are now in our company, in our brand, we are at least we can think about bringing a brand to this level uh, uh, purely on zero capex, no manufacturing basis. So which was unthinkable probably a few, maybe a, a, a decade earlier. I completely agree to what you said, Manish. Yeah. Um, sure. Mr. Shivasa, two cents on building greater synergies. I think uh, <clears throat> time is already up, but uh, if people still don't collaborate, get everybody in the room and ask them to, uh, <clears throat> you know, only get out when you have a solution. Yeah. So call the elephant in the room. Uh, be open to all the ideas, uh, <clears throat> whatever, uh, you know, ego you have, please park it outside the room and you better collaborate because collaboration for now is not a choice. It is a compulsion. You better collaborate to exist and that is what COVID also taught us. So, yeah, thanks. Mr. Jain, we'll end with you. So, thanks. <laughs> uh, all I'll say is that uh, 
the earlier point made during the panel here was that far more transparency today, far more discovery today with the changes in the uh, overall retail. I mean, online is also retail. Uh, there is no choice but to collaborate. Uh, you will have to collaborate to survive because there is, there is transparency about products, there is transparency about pricing, there is transparency about customers, there is transparency about sales. And if you do not collaborate, then you will not be able to survive together and you will only be kind of uh, struggling to, to grow your businesses. So there is no choice but to collaborate and grow together at the same time. And of course, at the back of it, it's always you're serving the consumer in the right way. But at the end of the day, you have to collaborate. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time on a weekday. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, you were extremely proactive in engaging. So thanks again.